warm welcome to you all in the name of our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Our meetings, God willing, on Sunday are as normal at uh, 10.30 in the morning and uh, 6 p.m. in the evening when, God willing, I'll be the preacher. And uh, also it's the occasion of our Sunday school Christmas Christmas service uh, and all are very welcome to come to that. Okay, let's begin by coming before the Lord in prayer. Let us all pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that we may gather to call upon you and to seek your face. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege we have to come to your holy throne. We thank you for a saviour who has done everything needful for us, borne our sorrows, lived that perfect life that we could never live. And Lord, we thank you that we are complete in him. Pardon, Lord, all our many failings, our many shortcomings, our many transgressions uh, of your precious word. And Lord, receive us uh, graciously, pardon us and forgive us and bless us this night Help us, Lord, each one. Encourage us, help us through your word. And Lord, bless us as we call upon you. Be with us all, wherever we are. In the Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Our first hymn is number 464 in Christian hymns. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Until the Son of God appear, rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Oh, come, oh, come, thou. to thy tribes on Sinai's height. In ancient times didst give the law. In cloud and majesty and awe. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou rod of Jesse, free thine own from Satan's tyranny. From depths of hell thy people save, and give them victory o'er the grave. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Oh, come thou day spring, come and cheer our 
of spirits by thy advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadows fall to light. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou key of David, come and open wide our heavenly Make safe the way that leads on high, and close the path to misery. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Our reading is Psalm number 34. A Psalm of David, when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, who drove him away and he departed. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me. and Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life, and loveth many days, that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil, and do good. Seek peace, and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Amen. May the Lord bless to our hearts the reading from his word. Now, I'd like to take us our text this evening, verse 19 of Psalm 34. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. This psalm is full of promises, encouragement of the Lord's deliverance. If we look to him and trust in him, 
that in time of difficulty and trouble, he will help. And two weeks ago, I spoke about the Lord's promises to those who are afflicted and very wonderful and strong and great promises, primarily resting upon the fact that the Lord is ever with us and never leaves us nor forsakes us and his help is ever at hand to help us. But I'd like this evening to just be slightly more specific. There are many afflictions, uh, many various afflictions that may try the righteous, try the Lord's people, and there are many and various promises for those particular afflictions. Now, it's impossible, obviously, to go through all the things that may come upon the Lord, a child of God in this world, but I'd like to consider a few headings and the Lord's promises to those who find themselves in such situations uh, to encourage us in specifics. And one may say, well, there are many promises which are very general, and there are, and we may apply them in any number of situations. But it is helpful to, as it were, know that the Lord has planned and purposed and given us a specific promise for our specific trial. And uh, whether it be sickness, poverty, slander, what loneliness, whatever it may be, uh, that the Lord uh, is with us in these uh, trials and able to help us. And as Isaac Watts puts it in a forward uh, on a book on the promises that we may, though we are uh, on the table uh, of trial and difficulty, we may sip from the river of the water of life to strengthen us, give us hope and enable our faith to hold fast. So with that in mind, uh, I must confess my indebtedness to the book that Isaac Watts wrote his forward to, uh, simply called The Promises of God by Reverend Samuel Clarke, and an old book, but very helpful in his gathering together of these different promises. And I I've added some more uh, and will make comment as we go through. Uh, and the first is, in poverty. Now, mercifully, in this land, we don't face a great um, economic discrimination as believers, but in many nations, that is not necessarily so, particularly Muslim majority nations, where they may be shut out of commercial opportunities uh, and work. And over the history of the church, it is quite a common lot for the Lord's people. But there are many promises of the Lord's help for those that are poor. And uh, it may seem a silly thing to say, but as I was reflecting on this, there are virtually, you can correct me, but there are no promises to those that are rich. Uh, we are warned and, uh, against the, the snares of being rich uh, but there are many promises to the poor. Now, that may be because being poor is an affliction and we need the help of God all the more, but they are wonderful, gracious promises. And if I could just go through a few. Psalm 9, verse 18. The needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever may seem like they're forgotten at times but it shall not they shall not always be forgotten uh, and the hope their hope shall not perish and then psalm 68 thou verse 10 thou o god has prepared of thy goodness for the poor the poor may have little prospects humanly speaking in the world but the Lord, the, the believing poor, uh, the, the believer who trusts in the Lord and yet 
uh, is poor in this world's goods, yet has goodness prepared for him by the Lord. Psalm 69, verse 33, the Lord heareth the poor. The Lord hears the cries, the prayers uh, of the poor, and they are not despised by him. Uh, Psalm 132, verse 15, I will satisfy her poor with bread. That the Lord will provide for his poor saints and enough so that they will be satisfied and content. Psalm 72, uh, verse 2, and then verse 12 and 13. He shall judge thy people with righteousness and thy poor with judgment. He shall deliver the needy when he crieth, the poor also, and him that hath no helper. He shall spare the poor and needy, and shall save the souls of the needy. Now, speaking of the reign of the Messiah, of the Lord Jesus, and I know we may apply it spiritually, and very wonderfully so, but his rule over his people is one of righteousness and fairness thy poor with judgment um, the world that the wealthy in the world or they that have power will naturally uh, they naturally tend uh, to favor their own uh, and be biased in that sense against the poor those who have power and influence are usually nearly always the wealthy, um, and they will exclude the poor, often maybe not because they are fundamentally unfair, but because they are ignorant uh, of the needs of others, but not so the Lord Jesus, that he will be wonderfully righteous and upright uh, in his dealings with men, uh, and uh, very precious that we can commit things into his hands, though the world may not help, yet the Lord will. Uh, Psalm 102, verse 17, he will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. Again, the, the well-off in this world may have uh, money, to hire those who will plead for them, uh, to hire lawyers and solicitors and so on. Nothing wrong with that, but the poor may have no means to do so, yet the Lord will hear their prayer. He will be their advocate, though they have no advocates amongst men, and uh, he will not despise their prayer. Money does not commend us to God, nor does the lack of it make us less acceptable to him. And then uh, a promise that we see in one sense in the world in general often, Psalm 112, sorry, 107, verse 41. He setteth the poor on high from affliction. He lifts them up and maketh him families like a flock. And sociologists will tell us it is the poor who have large families. And when a certain level of affluence is reached within society, then the number of children in families will go down. Uh, but it is part of the Lord's blessing. Uh, he setteth the poor on high from affliction and maketh him families like a flock. And I'll read just a few more. Psalm 113, verse 7, He raiseth up the poor out of the dust, and lifteth the needy out of the dunghill. Jeremiah 20, verse 13, Sing unto the Lord, praise ye the Lord, for he hath delivered the soul of the poor from the hand of evildoers. Job 5 verse 15, he saveth the poor from the sword, from their mouth, and from the hand of the mighty. Verse 16, so the poor hath hope, and iniquity 
stoppeth her mouth. Job 36, verse 15, he delivereth the poor in his affliction and openeth their ears in oppression. And in the New Testament, James 1, verse 9, let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. In James 2, verse 5, hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? Wonderful commendation. In one sense, the poor believer will more naturally uh, be cast upon the Lord. Their faith will be more naturally strong because they have to look to the Lord uh, and cannot look to themselves or to men. And lastly, uh, and it may seem an extreme uh, situation with the rich man and Lazarus. Luke 16, verse 25, Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted and thou art tormented. Now I know this does not mean that just because we are poor, we will have blessings in the life to come. All believers have uh, heaven as their inheritance. Uh, but uh, it is a, 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 an encouragement that though we suffer as the Lord's children in this world, and we do not have all the things, uh, and not just material things, but the worldly influence or prestige that the world has or other comforts, pleasures, yet ultimately the Lord will make up for it. And uh, it is a warning in one sense not to despise even the most poor in society. Lazarus was a believer and yet was placed, uh, went daily outside the rich man's gate. And uh, there may be, I'm not saying one should be sentimental, but there may be folk who are genuine believers who are homeless. A number of them I've met who will carry a Bible around with them and they may be in difficulties due to mental illness uh, or, or problems out of their own hands. I know there are many who are scoundrels and will manipulate people, but there may be, that's all I'm saying. And, uh, uh, but ultimately the Lord is their help and will deliver them one day from their great trouble. Uh, but the poor, the Lord promises all these gracious promises to them. And going on from that, a, a similar one might say a subcategory of the poor, the fatherless and the widow. Now, uh, there are not so many orphans uh, in this country uh, these days, but there are many single parent families. and Not so many parents who uh, thankfully die young and leave their children uh, in that sense without parents. But there are many uh, mums, not from fault of their own, uh, who have been left to care for the children. And in that sense, I'm sure these promises apply also to them. Uh, there are solemn, the first is really a solemn warning. Uh, sometimes one reads things and one's eye passes over it and you don't really think about it. But it's a very solemn warning. Uh, in Exodus, Exodus 22 and verse 22, you shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. If thou afflict them in any wise and they cry at all unto me, I will surely hear their cry. And my wrath shall wax hot and I will kill you with the sword and your wife shall be widows and your children fatherless. That uh, he will defend them. Uh, and protect them 
uh, and he will uh, defend them, though they cannot defend themselves. So they have no father of their own to defend them. Similar promise uh, in uh, or warning in Proverbs 23, verse 10. Remove not the old landmark and enter not into the fields of the fatherless, for their Redeemer is mighty. He shall plead, meaning argue, as a lawyer does, plead their cause with thee. The Lord will take up their cause, though they cannot, they may not even be aware of it, but the Lord will protect and bless uh, and make sure that they are watched over and kept. Uh, similar promise, Deuteronomy 10, verse 18, he doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and the widow. And Psalm 10, verse 14, the poor committeth himself unto thee. Thou art the helper of the fatherless to judge the fatherless and the oppressed that the man of earth may no more oppress. And a gracious promise, Psalm 68, verse 5, a father of the fatherless and a judge of widows is God in his holy habitation. I'm sure I've mentioned it before, but this was one of the verses in particular that George Muller would plead before the Lord when pleading for the maintenance of the orphans. He would uh, commend them or commit them to the Lord as the Lord, as the father of the fatherless, that though they had no earthly father and, and uh, uh, those at this time have no earthly father, yet the Lord will be their father, will supervise their provision and their training and, and all the things that a, 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 a godly father ought to do. Uh, and just one or two more, but uh, Psalm 146, verse 9, he relieveth the fatherless and the widow. And Psalm, sorry, Proverbs 15, verse 25, the Lord will destroy the house of the proud, but he will establish the border of the widow. He will protect and maintain the house and the uh, farm of the widow. And lastly, wonderful promise in uh, Hosea 14, verse 3, in thee the fatherless findeth mercy. And it's interesting to find out people's background, biography, not to be nosy, but uh, I remember hearing our friend Stuart Burgess's testimony that uh, uh, he was born into a, a single parent family. He said it was before abortion was uh, legal, but if it had been legal, he might have been uh, the subject of such a thing. Uh, and yet, uh, he wonderfully helped in life, uh, helped in his education, though he did not go to university straight away, did not do his A-levels, went to an apprenticeship uh, just along the road at Stoddard and Pitt in Bath and uh, engineering firm. And they saw his ability and uh, decided he ought to train and go to university. Uh, and in one sense, watched over by the Lord. Uh, and the Lord will help uh, those who are without a father, and particularly those godly families and godly mothers that are left caring for the young. Uh, many promises of the Lord's help and that we should in one sense plead for them the fatherless and the widow, the childless. Now, it's not necessarily wrong, but sometimes for those who are married, well, it's obviously not necessarily wrong if we're not married, but uh, for those who are married, it can be a significant trial. But uh, 
these just a few promises. Psalm 68, verse 6, God setteth the solitary in families, often applied to the Lord's people in churches, but the Lord will provide uh, company for those who are lonely and maybe not have a family of their own. The Lord will set the solitary in families. Psalm 113 verse 9, he maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. And then lastly, to those who are unmarried and in the providence of God, that is his gift to them. Uh, a precious promise in Isaiah 56 verse 4 and 5. Thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbaths and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant. Even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters. And I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off, though they may in earthly terms not have any uh, children, yet they will have a wonderful everlasting name from the Lord and a place amongst his people, a name uh, and honour amongst his people. But going on uh, now, I know I can't cover everything, but I must speak of sickness. Because although I don't believe there is an absolute promise anywhere in the scriptures that tells us we will never be sick uh, in this earthly life, if only we had enough faith, we would not die otherwise, if that were so, uh, to put it simply. Uh, but the Lord has given us promises of healing uh, and of help. And above all, that as he has taken the sting out of death, so he has taken the hurt out of sickness. And we are in his hands. We will not be sick unless he wills it. Uh, and if he wills it, it will be for our good. And uh, just a few, usually with the condition that if we serve him and keep his commandments, he will preserve us from sickness. Um, verse Exodus 23, verse 25, ye shall serve the Lord your God, and I will take away sickness from the midst of thee. Exodus 15, verse 26, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and wilt give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Similarly, Deuteronomy 7 verse 15, the Lord will take away from thee all sickness, and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt upon thee. Now we don't know what the diseases of Egypt were in particular, but certainly, I think a godly life tends and most certainly tends towards good health, chastity and uh, temperance in, uh, in, in, meat, in food and drink and so on, uh, moderation and uh, good habits of life inevitably are, are beneficial for our earthly health and that is very plain uh, anyway but it is reinforced by what is said here and to keep the lord's commands is not only uh, prudent in terms of spiritual blessing but in earthly health as well that the gracious promises in psalm 91 verse 3 sure uh, and Another, surely he shall deliver thee 
from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. And Psalm 103, verse 3, it doesn't mean that he will heal all our diseases, but it is he who does heal if we are healed, uh, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. We must look to him for help and healing, and we must give thanks for help and healing in sickness. Uh, and but promises that he will keep and he will heal his children. There is support promised uh, under sickness, in one sense, evidence that he does not will, that uh, he does will at times that his people will pass through sickness. Psalm 41, verse 3, the Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing, Thou wilt make all his bed in his sickness. The Lord will be our nurse, if you like. Will make it all his bed in his sickness. It is, if you look it up, Psalm 41, it is in a measure conditional upon caring, showing some kindness to the poor. But a precious promise that the Lord will help and lift up, strengthen upon the bed of languishing, and bring them out of their sickness. And a, a more general promise, Psalm 116, verse 6, The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. But then lastly, of uh, these categories, and obviously there are many more, the book I was looking at deals with in warfare, with enemies, uh, in a general sense, uh, and there are obviously many that we can think of, slander, uh, but this is simply in old age, in one sense an extension of sickness. Psalm 71 verse 9, cast me not off in the time of old age, forsake me not when my strength faileth, and the implication being that the Lord will not cast him off in old age, or when his strength faileth. A wonderful promise, Isaiah 46, verse 4, And even to your old age I am he, and even to hoary hairs will I carry you. I have made, and I will bear, even I will carry, and will deliver you. When we can't carry ourselves, he will carry, he will uphold and he will bring us safely to the end of our days if he tarry and does not return. And uh, Proverbs 16, verse 31, the hoary head is a crown of glory if it be found in the way of righteousness. And lastly, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16, though the outward man perish, the inward man is renewed day by day. Certainly, we must grow old, we will grow old, uh, but the inward man is renewed day by day. And very precious old saints, the old worldling may often be bitter and angry uh, uh, and frustrated, but the old saint is cheerful so they're not without their burdens, outward burdens, but inwardly cheerful, trusting in the Lord, a great encouragement to younger believers. That, and one must say, why does the Lord leave his people in this veil of tears to sometimes great age? I'm sure one of the principal reasons is to show his faithfulness and to show younger believers, that he is able to keep and will keep and help us if we put our trust in him. 
and he will bear us up though we be weak physically uh, yet uh, he is ever faithful uh, and he will keep his children uh, old or young and uh, those sadly so few now but uh, those quite elderly now who grew up during the war uh, those who are believers wonderful testimony wonderful encouragement of the Lord's help and deliverance uh, in great uh, difficulties and uh, I think of uh, Michael's Michael Payton's little uh, commendation uh, says it's one of his most precious possessions uh, for consistency in going to school during the period of the doodle bugs the V1s and V2s and uh, really doesn't compare to going to school uh, with the threats at this time but uh, anyway these promises given to us many others uh, and to encourage us to be courageous to bear up to put our trust in the Lord in whatever we may face remembering that the Lord is ever with us and if we can remember specific encouragements for specific trials so much the better but there are many as we considered two weeks ago that apply to all difficulties uh, and all trials uh, and as uh, david says many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivereth him out of them all we may think, oh no, another difficulty, uh, another affliction, sometimes following hard upon the last, but remember the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He will not grow weary in delivering us, uh, didn't grow weary in helping David, though in a very dangerous situation here, uh, and his promise at the end of the uh, the, the psalm, the Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. And may he help us, may we know his blessing, and his help, particularly as we uh, go into a new year shortly with ongoing difficulties, but that the Lord will be uh, confident that the Lord will be our help and the Lord will will bring us safely through. Amen. Now our second hymn is number 591 by John Newton, Why Should I Fear the Darkest Hour? Shall 
be supplied. But Jesus knows and will provide. No sin would fill me with distress. A throne of grace I dare address, for Jesus is my righteousness. Oh, faint my prayers and hold my love, my steadfast hope. Shall not remove while Jesus intercedes above. Against me, earth and hell combine, but on my side is power. Divine Jesus is all.